This is the Television Enthusiast Podcast, The Weekly Sex. Episode 9, recorded March 26, 2015. Welcome to the TV Enthusiast Podcast, The Weekly Set. I am your host, Tyson. Joining me today are Lee. Hey. Kat. Hi. And Will. Hey. Today we will mostly be focusing on our feature topic, Advocates of Great Television. But first I thought we could touch base a little bit with what we've been watching. So, just a few topics we'll go over real quick. Uh, last week we were talking about Will getting caught up on Community, and he was in the early stages of the first season, so I wanted to touch base. Will, where are you in community right now? I finished episode 10. What was episode 10? I think it was the one about the debate team, wasn't it? I think I remembered a debate team episode there was, in season one. So. Yeah, I, th- I think that was episode 10, because that was the last one I watched. Where So you're still not up to the paintball episode? Still or? not. I didn't, get much of a ch- I didn't get a chance to watch much of it this week, regrettably. I was busy. But yeah, still not up to that. I, apparently I looked, that's like, Episode 23 or something? That's towards, like, the end of the season. I knew it was pretty much later, so when you said 10, I'm like, yeah, I I doubt he's there yet. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So what are you thinking of Community now? You've seen... You were at episode 8 last week, right? Right. Okay, so you've seen two more, so what are your thoughts now? My thoughts... Well, I mean, it's the same as last week. The quality has been... Is still consistent. Oh, one thing I loved, like, the episode before that, they started to go meta with uh, Abed and his filmmaking. Cause na- <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Because now they were like, like, he's putting out these films that are like exact copies of like what happened <laughs> in the show. And now, and then, and then like they, they point out they're like, like, hey, that, that was us last week. And then, <laughs> and then like, uh, I think Donald Glover says something like, yeah, but he made this weeks ago. And then everybody's thinking Abed's like a psychic now. <laughs> it's a, it's, that's a mainstay of Abed's character throughout from this point on. So that, that's going to be like a big part of his character. So what you're getting right from that is a huge glimpse of what community kind of turns into. Right. That, that kind of meta side specifically through Abed is like a, it's pretty much his primary purpose in the show you know <laughs> oh, okay he's like he's the vehicle through which they do all the meta comedy basically yeah, yeah. oh that's cool. i think that's why we all love him so much yes <laughs> and and like and like abed explains it like oh he's not he's just really good at reading people so he knows how they're going to react in situations <laughs> and like that's that's like his excuse, but like everything he writes like happens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Yeah, that that's not bad. <laughs> yeah. So I, I enjoyed that episode. Um Yeah, if you really dug that aspect of it, then you're just gonna it's just gonna get better and better for you as the show goes on. I just nice. hope we're not overselling this series for you. I don't hope I hope you don't come back to us and say, well, that was completely underwhelming. It's going to change your life, It's going to... I'm not going to want to watch anything else. You'll take a a deep breath and the air will taste different. (laughs) (laughs) Colors will be brighter. (laughs) Nothing will be the same for you ever again. (laughs) Oh, that's great. (laughs) Okay, so let's move on from that then. That sounds like you're you're kind of already enjoying it and you haven't even gotten to the real kind of meat of that show yet, which is great. It means you have a lot to look forward to. So I'm I'm really looking forward to what you're getting on there. We probably won't get a chance to talk about this next week because our feature topic, continuing on from this week's right. feature topic, is going to pretty much take everything next That's week. That's cool. Um, I'm but I'm okay with uh, holding off on the community talk for a few more weeks to like. I got, like, a significant chunk of it, like, viewed, and then I could come mm-hmm. back and talk about it, because I'm interested to see how my impressions, or what I think how that's going to change going forward, uh, so I'm interested in that. Let's wait until you get through the paintball episode. Right, okay. And then once you're through the paintball episode, no matter if you're several episodes past that, or just after that episode... Um, that week we'll, we'll talk about community again. Okay, cool. Yeah. So, um, I also hear that, uh, 
you had some uh, concerns or pessimistic views on the most recent episode of The Flash. Yeah. <laughs> Last week, I had a lot of praise for The Flash. I thought what they did in that episode was very bold. They did some very bold things that potentially could change the status quo. And I remember. And this week, the other shoe dropped. And I remember we ha- there was uh, <laughs> some concerns with the time travel undoing that. I I thought if they did that, that I wasn't expecting that to be the very next episode. <laughs> Which yeah, they I think liter- what frustrated me the most is that it's they utilized all these plot developments at the end of last week's episode, and it's like the writers know that these are their best plot developments. So instead of utilizing them and going forward with them, they just said, "Yeah, aren't those great?" Let's completely undo all of that and go back to the status quo. And I think the moment that sealed it for me is that scene at the end where Caitlin comes and gives that lame excuse to Eddie and Iris for Barry's behavior. And I was like, and you just took away all the consequences. So we're back (laughs) to the exact same place that we were at the start of the episode last week in which case... What was the point? Yeah, I- you know what they had the what they had the potential to do, and what they, I think they should have done is they should have Groundhog stayed the rest of the season. They should, yeah, right. They should have made every episode results like that same day over and over again with more and more like horrible results from this <laughs> meddling. And 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 they could have just kept making it messed up. And but at the same time, they could have had reveals for the audience. By seeing certain th- aspects, you know, you're seeing kind of character motivations that we didn't notice right. up until that point. And then they could have brought it together, like at the end of the season, they could have like ended the loop or something. That would have been amazing, I think. I think that's kind of almost what the episode was setting up to do. And then it kind of just didn't. I really think, it's just, <laughs> I really think the only point of that episode was to introduce the concept of time travel. I mean, well, they already did, but to, you know, explain it more to the audience and be like, hey, this is a thing. Uh, but because everything they did is just been undone. I was massively disappointed by that. I was like, really? Come on, you had me all hyped up. Yeah, I was, I was also disappointed. And also, okay, is it possible I overthink the time travel stuff? But when Harrison Wells, as soon as he figures out that Barry has time traveled, he says to him, don't change anything. And, but my response was, but if he doesn't change anything, then he's just going to time, tra- wind up at yeah. that point again, where he time travels and he's just going to exactly. wind up back here again. Well, like, obviously that's why, he does That's why I thought a thing. Groundhog's Day loop could have well, made sense, like for the rest of the season, but then they shut that out the window real quick. Well, yeah. I, I, I take Wells telling Barry not to change anything or do that as just the villain side of Wells, you know, trying to prevent Barry from messing up whatever plans he has. So I think he's just saying that to keep Barry out of his way, in a sense. Sure, I can, I can see that. Right. But I think also, I complained about this last week, but I don't accept Flash now existing in the same universe as Arrow. <laughs> no. <laughs> and that's not going to be addressed. <laughs> I'm sure it's not. No. Yeah, I doubt it will be. That's not going to be addressed at all. Um, there is, from what I hear, there is another crossover episode happening with the Arrow and Flash later this season. Um, in Flash. Um, is it, is it just going to be in Flash or are they doing in our two hour? I think it's just going to be in the Flash. It's not going to feature the Arrow himself. It's going to feature other characters. Yeah, but, I okay. think it's going to include Adam, right? Yeah, so the like Adam, Adam, yeah. Or- so it's kind of almost more than like a spinoff. It's almost like a like a soft pilot for this this new spinoff right. series. Oh, I and I I right. noticed also I noticed the 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 subtle setup for the new series at the end of this episode of Flash, where Flash has that talk with Captain Cold, and they kind of come to an understanding, and then. Captain yeah, Cold just, that's true. Yep, that was like the first morally gray territory that the Flash has covered. It, 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 yeah, <laughs> it really is. It's about time. I think the Flash has been way, way too cut and dry with its uh, villains and heroes for my taste. I think it, one of the numerous reasons why I prefer Arrow, bar none, to the Flash. I think the Flash just 
everybody who's good is too good and there's no complexity to the characterization whatsoever for anyone except Harrison right. Wells. And it, like calling in the most interesting character really isn't saying that much because he's in some ways he's the only person who's actually a character. Right. He's he's only gray because he's black pretending to be white. Ex- yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. But I think I think uh with that character it's 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 a little more than that. Be- I hope so. Because I I get that sense from that. Like like the scenes that he had with Cisco in like both episodes, I felt that he had a genuine affection for Cisco, but he's still not gonna let him get in the way of his plans. Despite that. Yeah, that's a really good point. I completely agree. And I think the more they can play that up the better it works for his character and for the show. Right. All right, so let's uh, move on from that topic and let's get to our feature discussion. So we did this before, before our podcast was a podcast, when it was a text cast. <laughs> <laughs> we used to do this, the weekly set, as a roundtable discussion where we would basically just sit in a chat room or a Skype room and, and type out our chats for an hour and a half to two hours. <laughs> and post that up as as a, a discussion piece before we ended up eventually turning this into a podcast. So last time we did this, we decided we would each recommend a show, but not just a show, a specific episode of a show that we think is is kind of underserved with with either our audience or with the, our fellow podcasters, and give us a chance to um, all watch it together. And then the next week. We had, we came to the podcast having seen every recommended show from each of us. So we had all seen four shows at that point and were able to discuss, uh, what we thought of the other people's recommendations and, um, if we wanted to continue with the series or if we were still interested or what else was going on with that. So last time I recommended Black Mirror. Uh, we had Ed on at the time and he recommended the IT crowd. Cat recommended Friday Night Lights and Will recommended dead like me so we're, we decided that was a great segment and we want to do it again so here we are i'll i'll kick off our segment my pick is extras which can be found on hbo go or the amazon prime instant store or just hbo on demand if you're in the uk of course it's a bbc series there's just a tons of ways to get it i guess but um the specific episode i'm recommending is it's kind of weird to nail it down because um looking at the official episode guide it listed as the third episode but when i checked on amazon it listed it as the first so <laughs> uh I'm just going to go with the episode title, which is Kate Winslet, okay? So let me talk a little bit about extras. I won't talk about the specific episode because I want you guys to kind of go in fresh and watch it and tell me what you think. But the show itself, it's it's a Ricky Gervais show. It's also produced by Stephen Merchant, who is in it as well. Um, he plays a movie extra who's trying to become an actor. He wants to become a big name actor. And he's in this business and, and he's primarily working as an extra. And he has an agent who's played by Stephen Merchant. He's trying to get better roles through him. And and it's just kind of about the awkward situations around the set. And because they're doing it about movie extras, and because at that time in his career, Vicky Gervais was kind of guesting in a lot of different movies and TV shows and stuff, he was able to get a lot of, like, big-name actors to kind of appear on his show as themselves uh, uh you know from samuel jackson ben stiller you know, robert de niro even uh he got all of these actors on for these kind of brief cameos kind of playing these ridiculous you know versions of themselves similar to what you know i guess matt leblanc in in episodes or you know so many of the characters in curb your enthusiasm that that do that or you know what's that guy's name from dawson's creek that was on uh don't trust the bee in apartment 23 james vanderbeek and don't trust the bee in apartment 23 yeah (laughs) um so it's that kind of vibe going on. So you have these kind of like totally egocentric versions of these real people. And you have these interactions of these extras that are kind of like trying to one up each other and, and desperately trying to get like a role where they get like just one line. You know, <laughs> sometimes it's ridiculous the way they're trying to slip in a line. Sometimes they'll just literally throw it in and then the director gets all pissed off. At them. <laughs> 
Because they literally are, they're just supposed to be an extra and they try to like kind of say something really quick or, you know. And there's a lot of awkward situations just between the characters. The, you know, Ricky Gervais's character, he's kind of, uh, he's ambitious. But his best friend is, is a female. She's kind of dim-witted and she's, she's like a, she's, she's very friendly and she's really nice, but she's, she just kind of doesn't, she'll say certain things and not realize that they're really offensive or something. And so there's kind of like, uh, Ricky Gervais's character will kind of poke fun at her, but at the same time, uh, uh, have to kind of deal with the fallout of some of the things she does without realizing she's doing something really bad. Well, at the meantime, his own ambition causes him all sorts of problems. So it's kind of just about these awkward situations between people. Have any of you heard of this show before? I've of heard of it, yeah. I've never heard of it. Okay, so, yeah, um, what have you guys heard about it before? I, I know, I think Will said before that he had seen um, a clip of the... Patrick Stewart episode. Yeah. I, I've just heard of it, like, in terms of, because, of course, I've heard of Ricky Gervais' work and that he gets lots of um, celebrity guest stars on it. I, okay. I, and it sounds very, very British in its humor, similar to The Office. Yes. Yeah, I've, I've heard it was, I've heard it was a good show. I mean, I've heard nothing but positive things. I mean, it's typical of Gervais' work in which, you know, very little of his stuff gets heavy criticism. It's usually usually his stuff gets a lot of praise. Mm-hmm. So Lee, how does this sound to you having not heard of it before? It sounds very familiar to um, episodes, and I really liked episodes, so I'm actually looking forward to this. Yeah, I think I think you'll dig it. I know you're you're a bit of an Anglophile like I am, <laughs> so you're into the British stuff. Uh, I think you'll dig it. It's it's really funny, and it's got that just that awkwardness is really well done. I think. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna move on from my suggestion. I pretty much covered what we're gonna do on that. Remember, it's extras. Um, the episode title is Kate Winslet, and Kate Winslet is in the episode as herself. It actually, uh, one thing I can say about the episode is I'll, I'll talk about it a little bit next time, but it kind of predicted the future a bit, this episode. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's something that they go into about Kate Winslet's character in this episode that ends up actually happening. Oh, that's bizarre. Cool. <laughs> like in the, in the future. So it, it's kind of a funny little thing. So, uh, you might, you guys might be able to figure it out when you watch it or if you look it up or something, but we'll definitely talk about that next week. Um, so yeah, let's move on from that. Uh, next up. We have Will. What is your choice, Will? My choice is Deadwood, which was like a Western series on HBO. It was like, it's, well, it was like a really good Western series. It was like, it's based off of real history. It was based off the real town of Deadwood. All the characters in there, in that show, are based off of real people who actually lived. Um, I believe the, the events are fictionalized. I, don't know, I didn't like yes. research it enough to make sure, but. I believe, yeah, the events are fictionalized, but it's a really good show. Yes, I've actually seen the show. This is this is one I have seen. It's been a long time, though, so I am really looking forward to watching it. It'll be kind of interesting to watch because Timothy Oliphant is in it, and I've been watching him, you know, this is the final season of Justified right, right now. And so be, it's interesting to kind of contrast, you know, their characters because when Justified was first coming out, there was a lot of comparisons to Deadwood because Justified is kind of like a modern Western, in a sense. Yep. Justified is a modern day Western, whereas, and Oliphant is kind of playing a similar character in Deadwood. Except he's got a sense of humor in, in Justified. Yeah, ex- yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> he's pretty stern in Deadwood, but yeah, it's, it's a really good show. There's a lot of kind of people that are in that show that have since kind of become better known character actors. Um, and people that you kind of might not even expect. I know in one of the episodes, Kristen Bell is in it. Yep. From Veronica Mars. Nice. I know, uh, and that was right around, I think, the early days or even before Veronica Mars. Um, it was right around that time. Uh, yeah, it was before else, uh, she got big, yeah. A lot of character actors that you'll recognize if you watch, you know, shows like Sons of Anarchy or, I don't know, just, diff- you'll, you'll see a lot of people that you're like, oh, this guy, I, I see him all the time, you know? <laughs> and a lot of them kind of got their start on there. Uh, so yeah. I'm I'm excited to watch that again. Did you pick an episode? Um, yeah, I'm going to go with the pilot because I feel like I was looking through the episodes. I feel like, oh, this is a good episode. But then I think, but how good is it if you don't know the story or the characters? You know, how good is it out of context? That mm-hmm. that that's an issue for me. So I I'm gonna go with the pilot. I feel like 
the pilot's the best. Like if you if you love jump in point. Yeah, if you yeah. love the pilot, you're gonna love the rest of it. And if you don't, you're probably not gonna enjoy the rest of it. So yeah, uh, and it's an HBO show. HBO shows tend to have very good pilots. I from my memory, Deadwood's pilot was really good. I remember the opening scene being very good. Yeah, I'm excited about that. Any, have any of you? Any of uh, uh, have Will uh, or no, sorry, have Lee, Cat? Have either of you heard of or, or do you know anything about Deadwood? Oh well, I've heard of it. So I know, and I know it got a lot of praise, and that it was on HBO a few years ago. But I never saw it. I've never heard of it. Never seen it. <laughs> <laughs> Looks interesting. So, one of the interesting things about Deadwood is that the language is like Victorian. But it's full of like the nastiest profanities you've ever heard. It's kind of shocking, like how vulgar some of the language can be. But at the same time, it's beautiful because it's all very. It, it kind of follows like a, a, a pentameter to a sense, you know. It's like it's very poetically written. Yeah, that's one. But it's using some of the worst <laughs> words you can imagine. And as somebody <laughs> pointed out, you know, the vulgarity isn't really appropriate for the time period either. People didn't talk like that back then but it's creative Mm -hmm. license you know i mean i think there's an authenticity that comes from the the use of the foul language on top of kind of the beautiful language or the beautiful phrasing um it it just i don't know it's it's weird it's hard to explain even if it's not authentic to a period it kind of it shocks you but it kind of draws you in at the same time in a strange way that's unique to the series yeah definitely Uh, I should also note it's it's been a long time since I saw it too, so I mean it's been a while. So I probably forgot a lot of it. So it'll be nice to go back to it and watch it again for myself as well. Mm-hmm. So then let's move on from Deadwood. We pretty much covered Real the majority. Quick, of can it. we talk about accessibility? Is there a place online? Deadwood is available on Amazon Prime Instant. Great. As well as uh, HBO Go, um, if you have that. And, well, HBO Now probably won't be launched by the time we need to watch this. <laughs> if you time travel... If you t- <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you have you an Apple device when HBO you time now. travel. Yes, yes. The problem is, but if I time travel and then I come back in time, I'll be in a different timeline from the rest of you. Oh, that's so true. That yeah, kind we'll of be talking about a different show. Well, I'll yeah. have recommended... You have recommended Sarah Connor chronicles which actually will be available on streaming in that universe definitely yeah (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) all right so let's let's move on to cat now uh what is your recommendation so i'm going with gilmore girls and now i realize i think this shows probably uh quite a bit outside what we usually go for on this site because i think we really like genre fair and that's totally cool i do too um, but I'm gonna, I'm going with, uh, I think like, um, some of your picks, there's like these fantastic episodes that come later in the series, but you really need a lot more emotional context and story context to appreciate them. So I'm going with one in, uh, first season. It's the 15th episode of first season and it's titled Christopher Returns. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, so I, are any of you familiar with the premise of the show? Um, yes. I, I vaguely know bit. about it. I, I know, um, I knew some people that were kind of into it at the time. I know it's kind of a witty show about a, a relationship between a mother and a daughter. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll just to give some background, because the episode itself actually does a fair amount to fill out some of these details. The premise of the show is that Lorelai, played by Lauren Graham, um, had her daughter when she was 16. And um, and then she ran away from home and she came from a very well to do family. And now she lives in more blue collar circumstances and um, to get her in the pilot to get her daughter into this really nice private school. She ends up having to go to her parents for for, uh, for financial help. And it's the first time she's let her parents back into her life, basically, since she ran away from home. And she has this really, really baggage filled complex relationship with her parents that's just full of tons and tons of passive aggression so um and i picked this episode because um as as you learn really quickly the character of christopher is rory's father and this is the first time on the series that we meet him and i like that in the episode like obviously we can talk about it more but you can kind of see that like he's just his mere presence is kind of a powder keg like it really sets off a lot of a lot of interesting drama. So hopefully it'll it'll make sense within that context. I think the episode itself does a fair amount to 
explain a lot. Like Deadwood, Gilmore Girls also, one thing I do know about it is that it was a kind of a, a launching pad for a lot of kind of actors that are currently doing pretty well. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like this has Jared Padalecki is in this episode. And Supernatural, the, yeah. yeah. And then um, Milo Ventimiglia, however you say his name, shows up. Heroes, in, yeah. Yep, he shows up in second season. And uh, Melissa McBride was on this. Well, oh, yeah, yeah. she became a superstar Bridesmaids. with Bridesmaids. So, like, uh, this, and, um, and the show, sadly, this episode does not showcase it as well as others, but the show is actually really, really funny. I think more so than these kinds of shows. So bear that in mind if you ever do d- decide to give the series a chance, because it's actually hilarious. I remember the one time I sat down. I watched, like, about ten minutes of it. I remember there was a lot of wit- witty banter between the two leads. Yeah, yeah, that's what the show is primarily structured around, is that relationship. I had a friend that was really into it. At the same time, she was really into Veronica Mars, and she used to draw comparisons to kind of, like, the sharp wit of both of the shows with, with witty female characters. So, um, I I have never watched an episode. It was just one of those ones that kind of slipped by me at the time. And you, you, you think about the times, uh, time frame that that was on. That was around when, like, Lost was on. And, you know, it was, oh, yeah. <laughs> it was yeah, actually, a pretty busy time actually, for great TV. here's what happened to Gilmore Girls when it came out is it premiered a year after The West Wing did. And all these people came out and said, is this show being written by Aaron Sorkin? Because it has the same very fast-talking, witty style that the West Wing does. So I mm-hmm. think in its own distinct way. And, hmm. and another thing I don't is, know if any of you are West Wing fans. No. I've, I've watched a bit. I was actually trying to catch up on West Wing while watching the final season of The Newsroom, and it was too much Sorkin for me. <laughs> so that, those fans got kind of put on hold a little bit. I might have to recommend West Wing for this next one then, because West Wing is one of the greatest shows ever. Okay, I avo- oh. I, yeah, I ignored West Wing because I I was afraid it was going to be this preachy show, and again, I I hate yeah. being preached at by television shows, and it just I understand completely. I understand completely. This is Sorkin in a more contained state. He became a lot preachier after the West Wing, but like the first four seasons when he was writing the West Wing, then it's it's utterly sublime. Oh, okay. So Lee, Lee, you said that you have. Uh, that you are familiar with the Gilmore Girls. Have you watched it, or have you just yeah? I've seen heard of it? I've seen episodes here and there. I haven't like seen them continuously. Like I've caught episodes from all different seasons. But uh, the really interesting thing that I want to add is I actually went to um, a live taping of the George Strompolopoulos show. It's a he's like a talk show. Um, Canadian talk show mm-hmm. host, um, very popular, and he had on the day that I went, uh, David uh, Sc- Scuftle. I'm probably butchering his name right now, <laughs> and Kristen Kirk. And uh, David was was actually there to promote um, his new show, Cracked. And he talked about Gilmore Girls. He talked about playing Christian and playing um, um, the father who had abandoned um, his daughter. And he he had a he said this really interesting line, which was. Um, I would walk down the street and girls would like, like young teenage girls would see me and just the association of my character would make them break out into tears and they would just have this very like violent reaction. Like they would, they would have this it's kind of like a look of horror on their faces and just the, <laughs> the association of being abandoned by, by your dad or, or by your, by a family member was, was very, He's like, it's, I understand that, that feeling and how difficult it must be for them. So he's like, I, I was, he's like, I was very excited to play a new character, even though his character was like, he was playing a drug addict in Cracked. Um, but he's like, <laughs> it, for a long time, that, that was, I took that, I took that role very, very seriously because of the, just the emotional, um, context of my character and the show and the effect that it had on people. He's like, I, I, I yeah, he, he related to that to that on the show um to everyone wow that's really cool yeah it's funny when you have a uh, um actors that kind of inhabit a role that's kind of questionable in some way and the actor becomes uh or actress becomes like so deeply associated with that character you used to hear it back all the time back in the day with like soap opera actors that like where they were villains and they'd be like assaulted on the street by people <laughs> that couldn't couldn't differentiate between the reality and the fiction <laughs> but i was thinking of like my own reactions and i was like 
imagine i'm trying to imagine if i saw mads mickelson who plays hannibal on the nbc hannibal series if i saw him in like a restaurant i would immediately go up introduce myself say how big of a fan i is and then leave the restaurant because i would not be able to eat while seeing him oh my god <laughs> i would not be able to know <laughs> that would be yeah i'd probably lose my lunch if i saw mads mickelson eating <laughs> <laughs> and that's just the the powerful effect that these shows can have on you, you know? What, yeah, when it's, you... a, it's the association, like, he becomes a symbol for that, that right. feeling, that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, that's uh, Gilmore Girls, uh, ep- episode 15 of season one, and it's Christopher Returns, you said? Yes. Christopher Returns, Okay. So, moving on to our last pick, uh, Lee, what is your pick? Uh, my pick for the roundtable show is, uh, Liar's Game. Uh, it's 2000, it's made in 2007 and it's a Japanese drama. It's, uh, based on a manga. Um, the premise of the show is basically there's a, there's a very naive girl who gets drafted into a sort of like a Liar's Game tournament and if she, Th- th- you're given a, a certain amount you're getting you're given a very large amount of money at at the beginning of this tournament and if you lose that money you have to pay you have to pay that amount and so being very naive she gets tricked immediately and she doesn't know what to do and she calls the police for help but they can't they're like we can't help you we don't even know what this is so she calls a very sort of famous like con man and he takes pity on her and tries to help her but Throughout the series, she's still very naive, but it, 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 it has that sort of, it has a very interesting duality because she's so naive and pure and then he's very conniving and smart, but he also, but he used to be like her, like he used to be very pure and trusting because his mother was very pure and trusting, um, so that's why he's helping her. She sort of reminds him of, of his mother. Um, but you see like what sort of society does to a person and how they can force someone to like very, turn very cynical and, and, um, like manipulative. So the whole, the whole show is like a strategy game of like, how do I beat the liars tournament? How do I, um, you only win by cheating. You only win by like cheating your opponent out of money. So the whole way, the whole game is set up to like steal, cheat, lie. It's like, it's like, a sort of like a very fancy big brother kind of like doomsday game sort of thing. It's very cool. And the, the style of the show is very interesting because it's very, um, it's, it's, it's very theatrical. Like the cut, there's cut scenes where you just, you see like, it's, it's very theatrical. I would say it's very, the- it's not like watching a very like modern pop show. It's more, it's more meant to be timeless, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. No. This is a series I knew about the manga. I had heard about kind of the anime and the and the series for it. But I had a friend that was into the manga for it, and he he sung high praises of the of that. Um, so it's something I kind of you know I'm vaguely aware of, I should say. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'm I look forward to seeing that. Uh, have any of you heard of this before, Will? If you, I know Kat's not into the anime or anything, but Will, have you heard of this series? Before? I have not at all. Okay. <laughs> so this is going to be a fresh go for for the three of us. Uh, do you have a specific episode? Yeah, just the pilot episode. So so you'll be introduced to the two main characters um, and sort of a, a, their backstory, and then you'll be you'll be able to see the first part of the game so the the very first sort of like like challenge of the game the tournament so you get to see like how how the con artist operates and like how he like is me- Oh, I sorry, I kind of just wound it. <laughs> but yeah, he you'll you'll see how Forget he, everything you just said. <laughs> you'll see how like <laughs> she operates which is very trusting and naive and like very like I don't I don't want to hurt anyone, I don't want to cheat a lie to anybody, I don't want to cheat any buddy out of anything and then he's very like we're gonna cheat lie steal and we're gonna do it in a way that like we're doing it 10 steps of heads what you would expect him to do he does he already knows that you're expecting him to do it so he doesn't do it so he does something like (laughs) like more advanced yeah it's very cool and just like like throughout the game the challenges get harder and harder and harder because there's more people there's more money so instead so the first round they cheat out of you cheat out of one person but the second round you cheat, I think, like out of three and then like five and then like ten. So like you're 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 you have more and more like opponents trying to take your money and you have more and more um 
people that you need to take money from. So it's just like the the stress just gets higher. Oh, that's a that's hmm. really cool. Okay, yep. and this is a series that's on Crunchyroll, which is yep. a uh, streaming service primarily for uh, um, anime, but also for uh, manga and uh, Japanese and Korean uh, live action sure. series. Yep. And so, yeah, you guys can find that on there. Crunchyroll is is like basically like a Netflix for anime and stuff like that, but um, it does make content available for free. Uh, if it, for some reason, this episode is not available for free, you can sign up for a free trial, um, on Crunchyroll. Uh, also, people who do have access to Crunchyroll will gain, um, 48 hour passes that they can give out to people. So I'll shoot one your way, Kat, so that you can watch it all in glorious HD. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. And, uh, yeah, so, uh, that kind of takes us to that. What do you What do you guys think about Liar's Game? Hearing the description, I don't know. I I have no. It, it, most of my experience with Japanese made products comes through video games. Uh. So like I have through JRPGs and the like. So I um, I have no context. I have no idea what to expect. So I mean, it could be fun. Um, at the same time, my biggest concern, and maybe this is this isn't necessarily a bad thing, is like. For instance, I watch Miyazaki films, and I enjoy them, but I literally spend half of them going, I don't think I have the proper cultural context to understand a lot of what's going on here. <laughs> but I'll, I'll certainly try it. I mean, it I very well could surprise me. It's it's very modern. Um, I wouldn't. I don't think that you would have any problems with uh, understanding any references or anything. And 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 there, the most of the show is based on either the character's background or the rules of the game. So it doesn't really like reference culture too much. I would say. So you'll you'll just be hearing, you'll just be seeing backstory, or you'll be seeing um, a game being played out, or you'll be seeing um, the rules of the game or how people are cheating the rules of the game. So it's very it's very logical in that sense and very like straightforward it's like its own little world and you'll be introduced to it i don't think that like you'll need to know like anything uh, okay. prior too much yeah okay cool well and miyazaki is pretty out there oh, so plus, plus um i'm recommending the pilot episode so that that'll help like you won't need to know anything <laughs> sure <laughs> <laughs> and if you have any questions just mark them down take some notes and we'll kind of decompress through it even though lee's the only one who's seen it so she can give the most advice on that but will and i are both kind of experienced with anime so we're, we're kind of familiar with the japanese storytelling kind of tropes yeah and, right yeah you know cultural uh milestones in that area so we can kind of you know, decompress on that, and that'll be an uh, interesting discussion. Although, and I'm looking forward I to admit, that. I've never seen any live action, live action Japanese programming. So, like all my experiences with anime or video games, but nothing like live action drama like that. I don't watch too much of the live action stuff. I have seen a few. I think I mentioned last week I'd seen um, a Toko Man, which is about a a guy that. Uh, um, saves a girl from a molester on a train and like ends up like talking about it on a. It's I think it's based on a real I story. Remember, he talks about it on a message board. I remember reading about that in an anime magazine. It, it was a true story. Apparently, apparently, like the incident, it got like really famous and it blew up and it became. They made that movie. And apparently it was just like a really popular story in Japan. Yeah, kind of, it took place, uh, he, he posted his story about saving this girl on a message board that's, I think it was 2chan, which is a, uh, or 2 channel, which is like kind of like the Japanese equivalent of 4chan that came before 4chan. Right, yeah. Mm. Uh, it's not quite as vicious as 4chan. I mean, there <laughs> is some of that, but it's not quite as bad. Um, and basically like 4chan, it's a bunch of kind of, you know, the, the people kind of all ganged up and they heard his story and they were able to kind of figure out details and find out who this woman was and, and kind of put them in contact with each other. And so it was kind of about this like nerdy kind of guy, um, saves this girl and then ends up finding a way to make contact with her again. And so that's kind of my only, I think, experience with a Japanese live action series, but I am deeply invested in, Almost everything else. I've been getting into like light novels now, and <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm kind of 
I'm I've gone off the deep end as far as all the Japanese stuff goes. I, you know, JRPGs. Anime, I kind of, it kind of manga. blows my mind <laughs> that last year there was a big budget movie starring Tom Cruise that was based off a Japanese light novel. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was uh, uh, Edge of Tomorrow. Yep, uh, good movie. Which uh, the Japanese uh, series or the Japanese book that it's based on is called. Uh, um, uh, all you need is kill. That's I. After seeing that movie, I actually kind of watched it. I watched that movie because we had a power outage. That we, knew was, <laughs> we, we knew it was coming, and it was in the middle of like summer, I think. And I live in California, so the middle of summer is like 110 degrees, you know. And even at night, it stays up usually around the 90s. So I was like, okay, I need something to do because I can't just lay in bed, I'll be sweating in my bed, you know, I need to like go out and do something during the time that the power outage is happening, and so I just went to the movie theater and Edge of Tomorrow was there, and I kind of have reservations about Tom Cruise because of, you know, all the Scientology stuff and all the air craziness around Right. That. but I was like, ah, oh, screw it, I'm going to watch this, this is like the most interesting of the ones that's out there, and I would heard good things, and I really enjoyed it. Later on, went on to read the manga that was based on the light novel, so I got was able to get kind of both sides of the context for that. So oh, cool! It's interesting. It's a good story. It's it's a ground that one's a Groundhog Day story, which is very popular in Japan. Um, we we talked about how I wish the Flash had been going down a Groundhog Day. Yeah, story. and of course there'd been great Groundhog Day, you know, episodes of shows like Supernatural and um, Xena Warrior Princess had an amazing Groundhog Day episode. I remember X-Files way back in the day. X Files had Eureka had a good one. Um, a lot of shows have had good Groundhog Day. You could do a lot with that concept. Yeah. yeah. Um, in Japan, that's a super popular um, idea that's been used in a lot of different, you know, mangas and light novels and stuff like that. But yeah, it's uh, I'm really looking forward to discussing Liar Game. It's it's going to be uh, an original topic for us because we haven't really talked about, um, you know, Japanese live action dramas kind of on the show at all before really so yeah that's going to be exciting so let's go through these list again i recommended um extras which is a show with ricky gervais on hbo and on bbc in england uh the episode is kate winslet which stars the actress of the the titular actress of the title um and uh, it's either the third or first episode of the series, depending on what service you're using, I guess. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so just look for the title, uh, yeah, uh, and you'll be able to find it. Uh, I believe it's listed as the um, first episode on Amazon Prime, and it's listed as the third when I looked up episode listing, so probably on the BBC in the UK. Who, why, do, why do companies like to shift around episode orders? I mean, that's... That's kind of what screwed up uh, Firefly, wasn't it? Um, yep, <sighs> I believe so. <laughs> that so that and changing yeah, the that, day, kind of. Yeah. Will recommended Deadwood, another a fellow HBO series. It's a western that came. Um, God, who who made this series? I'm trying to remember the name. Is it David Milch that did this? No, David Milch was Sopranos, I believe. Uh, yeah, well, Deadwood, it's, it's a good Western, stars, uh, um, Timothy Oliphant, um, uh, yeah. who's, uh, who played Al Swearingen, I'm trying to, Ian McShane. Ian McShane. Another great actor that's yep. in that, yes, uh, he's amazing He is, probably uh, plays one of the most iconic, I would say one of the most iconic characters in all of television. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> not, not to oversell <laughs> it, but it's a great performance. Yeah. And so uh, you're recommending the pilot episode, the first episode of Deadwood. Uh, let's see here. Cat is recommending Gilmore Girls, uh, episode one or no, episode fifteen of season one, titled "Christopher Returns." So yeah, uh, Gilmore Girls is a kind of a witty show that got missed out on by a lot of people. It was a CW show, wasn't it? Which show? Gilmore Girls? Uh, Gilmore Girls? Oh, that it was, was on, CW. It was on the WB, and then, as I recall, it was one of the shows that transitioned over to the CW. Yeah, that's right. When the right. WB that turned was... into the CW. Well, it was the WB and, and uh, um, U- uh, no, it was, uh, yeah, WB and uh, U- UPN. UPN, yeah. yeah. Merged, merged. Yeah, I remember those days. Oh, yes. It was a different era. Yeah. I, I remember the WB having much better programming than UPN. 
Well, you, At the same UPN time, had UPN Buffy, but... was trying to make up for it because they snatched up Buffy the Vampire Slayer for its last two seasons. And then, as I recall, I think Veronica Mars was on UPN. Yeah, you're right. No, Veronica Mars was WB, I believe. Um, I'm trying to remember. Maybe it was. No, I, I think it was WB. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Yeah. All I know is that the merge was a good thing because I like the CW. <laughs> yes, I do too. It's a much better network. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of surprised they didn't just keep the name the WB because it is still, it's Warner Brothers TV channel, you know? <laughs> Actually, t- I know. Does it even still have any affiliations with Paramount or Viacom? I don't think so. <laughs> wow, that's confusing. That is. Wow. Um, and then, uh, actually, Tyson, was that Wikipedia, according to Wikipedia, Deadwood is David Milch. Okay, it is David Milch then, yes. Okay. Yeah, uh, let's see here. And then our last recommendation. Uh, comes from Lee, and it is Liar's Game, uh, the pilot episode. Liar's Game is a Japanese drama that, uh, was originally a, um, manga and was also had a turn as an anime and can be seen on Crunchyroll. There's, there's a, there's a Korean Lions Ga- Liar's Game, which is 2014. That's not the one. It's 2007. Japanese drama game, drama. Okay. Thanks yeah. for the clarification. Okay. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay. I don't. I don't want us to be talking about two different shows, and someone's like, "What?" Oh, that That's would be awkward. That would be so awkward. <laughs> I'll make notes of that in the story. I'll, I'll also uh, in the article. If you go to, uh, I don't know if you if you get this podcast um, through uh, um, iTunes or any other podcast streaming service, check out TVEnthusiast.com. Go to the feature article for this this uh, episode of the weekly set. Which is, uh, is it episode 9? I believe this is episode 9, right? I think this is actually episode 10. I, I think it's 10. <laughs> I can sure. check because I name all of the files by the episode number. So if I just go into my folder. It's episode 9 because I have 8 here. I'm looking at my files. Okay. okay. I only have up to 8. It's the 10th one because we did that Better Call Saul special as well. Yep. Um, but it's yeah. If you're uh, counting that, nine. yeah, you're right. It is episode nine. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, uh, look up uh, the weekly set episode nine story on TVEnthusiast.com. <laughs> I will have links to all of the information you need to find these shows. Um, yeah, uh, it should be fairly easy. Uh, two of them are on Amazon Prime. Um, Gilmore Girls is on Netflix. It's yes. on our Netflix. Yeah. Yep. Okay, Gilmore Girls is on Netflix, and Liar's Game is on Crunchyroll. Uh, that brings our podcast to an end. This is a rather quick one. Next week, we will only be talking about this feature topic as we catch up with everybody that's now watched all of these four episodes. Uh, if you want to join in, uh, feel free. Watch the episodes, post comments, you know, send us uh, letters. We'll read them if we have any um and you will contribute in the comments this week and next week if you are interested in discussing any of these shows uh so yeah let's end this now thank you for listening to the weekly set the television enthusiast podcast our website is tventhusiast.com you can like us on facebook under tv enthusiast we appreciate your feedback you can leave comments in our articles and on our facebook page you can also participate in our forums. Uh, joining up is free and easy. My name is Tyson. You can follow me on Twitter, at Tyson Gifford. Will, do you have anything to plug or any social media drops? No, not today. Didn't you have a... You're on, you're on I'm Twitter, I'm on Twitter, though, right? right. At, I'm at Voxel Hero, if you're interested. Um, okay. Don't really post much on it, but still. If you want to add to your uh, following count. Yes, I want to add to my following count. <laughs> um, Kat, do you have any? Not at the moment. And Lee? Uh, I'll just plug my show, Let's Make a Game Out of Lee. Lee as in L-I. Uh, I play a girl who has never played video games, and then she gets haunted by a video game spirit, and then has to train to become a gamer. <laughs> 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 it's easy as that. A video game spirit. Those are the yep. worst kind. Uh, Jason from Indie Corner plays the spirit, so it's <laughs> it's it's yeah. <laughs> Jason, who is also the COO of the Enthusiast Media Network. Network, yep, that this site is a part of. Um, all of these links can be found in the article for the podcast at tventhusiast.com. Have a wonderful night. Good night. Bye. Bye.
Bye. Bye. If you would like to voice your opinion, send an email to the weekly set at tventhusiast.com. TV Enthusiast is a part of the Enthusiast Media Network. Stay tuned to TV Enthusiast and the Weekly Set Podcast for more coverage of all of your favorite shows. 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 Of all of your favorite shows.